could not do a better job than this. So I want to tell you a little bit about me, about how I became a national figure, and how that you know comes into right here in Jamaica Plain. So I rose to national prominence back in 2014. Uh, I was one of the very first targets of the alt right uh, during something known as Gamergate. This was, it was basically a harassment campaign that was led against women in the video game industry. So for years, I have been part of a group of women that have been speaking up for inclusion in the video game industry. I'm sure you've seen some of these stories about tech and how hostile it is to women. As a result of speaking up for that, my game studio, which by the way, my co-founder lived right here in uh, Jamaica Plain at the time, I got the full Steve Bannon treatment. I've had him going after me on Breitbart and my little Minneapolis going after me for year after year after year after year. There's no good way to have a law and order episode made about your life, but that happened to me because of all the death threats and rape threats and dismemberment that they threatened against my family and my pets. They did everything they could to shut me down and silence me. It would have been a lot easier if I just kept my mouth shut and done nothing. But I didn't. I kept speaking out for women and people of color in the game industry because it was the right thing to do. And as your congresswoman, that is exactly what I will do if I'm serving you. So I want to tell you about the first time I heard about my opponent, Stephen Lynch. I was just a college student. I was still closeted at the time. I was down in Mississippi, um, which is growing up queer on hard mode. <laughs> um, and I read about Stephen Lynch in the paper because a bill he had introduced here in, in Massachusetts made national news. When he was in the state house, he tried to pass a bill that would make people that committed hate crimes against LGBT people get out of jail free. He tried to pass a bill here in our state that would make anyone that committed a hate crime if some defense lawyer could find out that they acted quote unquote lasciviously, whatever that's supposed to mean, that they, the crime wouldn't count, it wouldn't be prosecuted as a hate crime. That hurt me so much as a very young woman. It hurts me today. And if you look at the legacy of what Stephen Lynch's votes have been, there's a lot he has to answer for in the Democratic Party. This is a man that voted against Obamacare. This is a man that voted for the Iraq war. His generation didn't come back from that war mangled. My friends did. People I knew gave their lives in that war. We've never had a real conversation against that. This is a man that feels like he's on the wrong side of every single issue. Women's rights, women's reproductive health care. He has spent his entire career crusading against that. So I think we're finally having a real conversation in the Democratic Party about the direction that we want to go. You know, candidates like me, I'm right there, I'm as progressive as you can be. Single payer health care, I'm right there. My campaign came out today. We're fully for uh, fully legalizing marijuana nationwide and looking at clemency for people that have been convicted of marijuana possession nonviolently. You know? Everything that's on, like climate change, funding more science, making higher education free or almost free. We are right there on every single progressive issue. And my opponent, Stephen Lynch, was on NPR just this last week. And he was saying he wants the Democratic Party to move closer to the center. Let's be really clear about what that means. Stephen Lynch wants the Democratic Party to move closer to Donald Trump than the people sitting here in this room today. And I don't think that represents a values in Massachusetts any longer. So this is my message to you. I'm not the only one running this year. There's an entire generation of women that are standing up, and we've had enough, and we are running for office. And people of color are running for office, and LGBT people are running for office. And I think this kind of Faustian deal we've had when the Democratic Party says, well, you know, we're better than the Republicans. I don't think that's going to cut it anymore. So my message to you is hope is coming and help is coming. And we are going to make this better if we have the strength of will to not stand idly by. 
asking them to do the right thing has not worked. It's time for us to run for office and do the right thing ourselves. Thank you very much. Yeah! Woo!